Hey there, I needed a play button toque to celebrate a YouTuber milestone. Keep watching because I'm going to teach you how to make one of these fabulous hats so you too can show people how serious you are about YouTube. To get started, you will need some red and white worsted weight yarn. You will also need a pair of size 4.5 millimeter US 7 circular needles and a set of double pointed needles in the same size, a stitch counter, stitch markers, a measuring tape, and some knitting knowledge. To begin, take your circular needles and cast on 92 stitches. You can cast on any way you like. I prefer the cable cast on because it gives me a nice finished edge. The downside to this is that it's not as stretchy as other methods. But hey, it's only knitting so you can cast on any way you like. I should also mention that this hat will fit an average sized adult head, i.e. it fits my head, which I think is pretty average. Once you've cast on 92 stitches and you've counted them to make sure, straighten out all of the stitches so they are not twisted around the needles. This is important unless you want to knit a Mobius instead of a hat. Granted, that would make a cool scarf. Note to self, knit a Mobius scarf. Next, we are going to place a marker and join in the round. Be careful to move your working yarn to the back side before you begin. Then knit one stitch to join the stitches in the round. And purl one stitch. For a change in scenery, we are going to move this knitting party outside. Then we are going to continue knitting one stitch and purling the next stitch. Continue with knit one, purl one ribbing until the piece measures four inches from the cast on edge. For me, this took around 27 rounds. Oh, and make sure, this is very important, that your spouse brings you a drink. After all, it's hot out here and you deserve it. Thank you. Once you've finished the ribbing and have measured to confirm you've got as close to four inches as you can handle under a YouTuber's time constraints, then we're gonna move on to stocking net stitch for five rounds. So you will knit every round for five rounds. Use a counter to keep track of the rounds, and remember to slide the marker at the end of each round. Awesome sauce! Now the next part gets a little bit tricky, but I'm certain you can do it. The next 15 rounds are the pattern for the Intarsia play button. The first round you will knit 45 stitches of the red yarn, then grab your white yarn, and knit 2 stitches in the white yarn. Then turn the work. For the second round, purl four stitches with the white yarn. Then purl 88 stitches with the red yarn. Normally, when working in the round, you would knit every round to create stocking at stitch. Now we have created a right side and wrong side of the work or front side and back side, just like when you knit on straight needles. So to continue in stocking at stitch, we need to purl all wrong side rows. When you reach the end, right before the white section starts, you will turn the work again and begin round three. Knit 86 stitches of the red Then knit six white stitches, making sure to wrap the white yarn around the red yarn to join the two color sections together. When you reach the end of the white stitches, turn the work again and you can flip it inside out to make it easier to hold for the purl row. Round four, you will purl eight stitches of the white yarn, then purl to the end of the row in red yarn, which should be 84 stitches. Turn the work at the end of every row until the 15th row of Intarsia play button pattern. The fifth row, you will knit 82 red stitches.
Wrap the white yarn around the red yarn and knit 10 white stitches. Continue knitting on the right side and purling on the wrong side. Increasing the white stitches by two each row until there are 14 white stitches. At the eighth row, instead of increasing the white by two stitches, you will only increase it by one stitch to make 15 white stitches on the needle. This will create the point of the play button. and 77 red stitches. At the ninth row, which is a knit row, we are going to start decreasing the white stitches each row. So this row you will knit 78 red stitches, and then knit 14 white stitches. Continue to wrap the white yarn around the red to join the color sections together. The 10th row is a purl row, and we will continue to decrease the amount of white stitches by 2. So this row you will purl 12 white, and then purl 80 red. Continue working in the pattern, decreasing the amount of white stitches worked by 2 each row and increasing the red stitches by two. At the 15th round, which should be a knit row again, and the final row of the pattern, you will knit 90 red stitches, and then two white stitches. Then instead of turning the work, you will join the round and knit to the marker. Yay, you did it! And don't worry about the giant hole in your hat, we'll fix that later. Now to finish our toque. Moving outside once more for a change of scenery, we are going to knit in stockingette stitch. So knit every round until the hat measures around 9 inches from the cast on edge. There's no right or wrong here, if you want a longer hat, simply knit for an inch or two more. When you knit over the last two white stitches, just be careful to pull the white yarn tight again. To decrease and shape the top of the hat, we are moving inside to my ottoman, because my daughter insisted I watch a movie with her, and how could I refuse? For the first decrease round, you will decrease by knitting two together 12 times evenly around. I did some math and it works out to knitting six, then knitting two together twice, then knitting five, then knitting two together once. Repeat that sequence three more times. You should be left with 80 stitches on the needles. The second round you will knit two, then knit two together around, leaving 60 stitches on the needles. For the third round you will knit one, then knit two together around, leaving 40 stitches on the needles. For the fourth to sixth rounds, you will knit two together each round until five stitches remain on the needles.
the finish, you will cut or break the yarn. Then take a darning needle and pull the yarn through the remaining stitches before tying off and darning the end in on the inside of the hat. Darn in the remaining loose threads, except for a long piece of white yarn left at the top of the white play button. We are so close to being done. This is so exciting. As much as I detest the finishing work on a project, I sure am glad when it's finally complete. Take that long remaining white thread and sew up that hole we made, creating that cool play button with mattress stitch. Basically sew under the bar of each stitch on opposite sides of the hole to create a nice clean seam. Flip the hat inside out. You should see the seam on the inside of the hat. Tie off the white yarn and darn in the end. Now you can be done here, or you can add a pom-pom to complete that Canadian toque look. 100% would recommend. Use a pom-pom maker or two donut-shaped pieces of cardboard to create the perfect pom-pom for your toque. Give your pom-pom a haircut to tidy up the edges. And then sew that sucker on so tight not even a Canadian winter storm could tear it off. And there you have it, your very own play button toot to celebrate any YouTuber milestone, even the small ones. Because to be honest, those are the biggest ones. Thanks so much for watching! If there was anything in this video you would like explained in more detail, leave a comment and I'll either do my best to help or maybe even make a video on it. My name is Pam and this is Total Pamarchy, the craft channel with a little anarchy. Until next time!